Hello friends, my name is Balram Prasad and I am working with Microsoft as a senior software engineer. So today I am thinking to talk about Azure Functions. So Azure Function is a serverless solution provided by Azure and Azure is a cloud solution provided by Microsoft. So when we talk about serverless, then means that uh, you do not have to maintain underlying servers and Azure uh, will do for it uh, automatically. So that is why it is right now serverless is a good feature to have and your application. So if you, you can rewrite or you can write application as a serverless fashion, then it will be great because you do not have to think about your underlying host and underlying infra and you can you can you have to just focus on your code. So which kind of application we can build using function app, right? We can build um, APIs uh, which uh, which will be triggered based on HTTP call. So you have to have in some kind of event to activate this Azure functions, right? Serverless function. How they are going to activate? If you have a you want to write an HTTP API, then HTTP trigger trigger is your event. If you want to Right. If uh, you remember, you know that when previously there was a backend job that was a Windows service job, which were being triggered as a time trigger based on certain time or a certain event which was happening inside your host oper operating system. So that kind of event handling, you have to have some kind of event uh, to activate this function. So, and this is on com um, on demand. If something you need, then only this function will run. Which kind of scenario, right? If you want to build a web API, you can build using Azure function using HTTP trigger. If you want to process file uploads, then we can use this one and we can have the binding called with blob storage. So once the data file is uploaded into blob or Azure storage, then automatically this function will be kicked in and the process will happen. Like suppose someone has uploaded a image on your website and you want to process into different sizes or thumbnails, then you can use this kind of thing. Or if you want to build some workflow, uh, based on that, uh, you can change the different uh, functions. And if something, some somebody has approved some something, and then some other function will be called, or that will move to different queue. That kind of approval workflow we can build using this one. Or if something happened to in database, something changed into Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB is no SQL. If something got changed, then if you want to trigger a function, you can do that one. Or if you want to schedule that one on a certain time based thing, then we can do that one also. Or maybe if something came into your queue like Azure queue or service bus or event up, some event is happened, then you can also do that one. You can integrate or you can generate the event from IoT devices also, and you can do that one. And if you know that one web technology called Signal R, then you can plug in that with this one. So that we can do. And it has a great um, SDK support. So you can you can use this one from C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, PowerShell, Python, custom handler, lot of things you can do with this one. So uh, this is serverless and this uh, serverless is nowadays boom. And it is also, uh, you can design your application based on microservices architecture so that whatever you need only that code will be there and that will be executed based on some event. So this is a great paradigm to have. You can design your application like that one. You can go through with this one and you can see that one that how it is happening, right? So uh, this this is that different things about that one and, and what are the bindings that you can uh, you can activate this function on blob storage or Cosmos DB, event grid, event hub, HTTP as I talked, a lot of different um, supports are there for that one and your function will be activated and you can define this function, you can write these functions into different uh, languages and uh, there are two type of um, binding right input and output right so you can activate one thing if something happens into blob your function active will be activated but what the output output also can have a binding so you activate if you see this in blob storage can have a um, in as a input activation and output also binding your cosmos also input and output if something got changed into cosmos your function will be triggered and you update back to cosmos db that's all the function is there is no state in function there is nothing in function right 
Similar to that one, if you see queue storage, the triggered is one output only, right? Trigger will happen. This is triggered and then output will happen. So once trigger will be happen, you can push that message to different queue also. So this is, you can do all this. You can go with the sample also. I am also trying to build some uh, sample on that queue store, queue storage um, trigger and Cosmos storage trigger. And then uh, we will see some timer trigger also. A uh, few things more uh, we can see that and output is same grid we can see that one uh, we are um, going to build in a uh, hypothetical scenario which we are going to have a series on that one so that is what I am thinking and this is what I am uh, so now I am going to create a Azure function app into portal how to create and maybe later we can deploy that one uh, some application over there and we can see that one so right now I am going to create a pen uh, plain Azure uh, function app into portal there will be no code deployed but yeah that is what i am going to do so let's see so i have uh, this account with my visual studio subscription uh, where i am going to use this portal azure portal and i'm going to create some of the resources which needed for this demo so let's see the very first resources i am going to create that one using add function app okay So I am going to create a function app. For creation of function app, you need a subscription, which uh, you will once you sign up with Azure, uh, you will get a subscription. And then you have to create a resource group. A resource group is a logical container for your applica uh, application related resources. Then I am going to give a function app name, which should be unique for it should be globally unique that is why if you see uh, the dot azure website dot net will be there so that you can call it from anywhere right so let me go ahead and let's see this is yeah so this is um, available right now i'm going to create with this one and how you are going to publish this code so right now i'm going to publish as a code note i'm not using docker container so then you have to figure out that a hey, which type of application you want to deploy with the uh, function app. You can deploy .NET Core application. You can deploy uh, Node.js. You can deploy Python application, Java, PowerShell Core, or any cu custom application apart from native support. You can deploy with custom handler. So for this project, we are going to use uh, .NET Core. And then which application framework uh, version of .NET Core you want to go and use. So we are going to use with uh, 3.1 right now. And then which region you want to use. So Azure has a lot of regions. I am going to select on South India. I will talk about region and geography in different video. So uh, let's go ahead. Then it asks that one that where your code when your code will be deployed where is that code and other thing will be stored or other state will be stored so we have to create uh, it will create a new storage account altogether and then it asks that one you are deploying this application what is the internal os you need uh, either linux or a windows so we are going to have windows now the um, the very interesting part is plan that which type of plan you want either serverless consumption that whatever consumption you are going to do that will be only charged and you do not have to maintain um, uh, internal OS or patches and anything everything will be hidden from you but you can go with a few different options it has app service plan also where you are going to provide that what SQ size and other thing you need for this one and uh, there are different uh, scenario where you can, may need this uh, this uh, plan type change and a different thing but for most of the if you are going to totally serverless this is the best scenario you can have and you can choose the plan type where um, consumption based will be there then you are going to um, do that what kind of monitoring and other things will be there for this application so I am going to disable this one application inside because I am going to create application inside once again back and I will tie up with this Azure function. That is why I am disabling right now. 
and then for better management if you have too many resources you have too many resource groups why you have created for which application you can put some tag so that in billing you can see that tags based billing and you can figure out that for which application for each which environment either dev or pp or prod which environment we you are going to pay this bill so that is what right now i'm going to review this one and then i will submit this one for creation purpose so it validated all these things and then if you see that one that sq because we have chosen that okay consumption based the sq will be dynamic we do not need to maintain and we do not have to do anything so that all will be maintained so i am going to create this one it takes some amount of time i have just submitted this one so i will wait for this resource to be created now once this resource will be created we will see over here So as you can see that uh, deployment is complete, I can go to resources. This is how it looks like when you go to the, that resources. There are a few options where you can restart your function app, you can stop or you can browse that function app. If you right now browse that function app, you will see that your function app is up and running. So you will see these details. And then if you go into function app right now, uh, functions, there is no function because we have not created and deployed any function. We have just created resources for that one in Azure. So we will go ahead and create the uh, function app into our Visual Studio and deploy that one.